Hi everyone, my name is Callie Smith. I was assigned Chapter 17 of our text, Digital Audio. Um, and I would like to get started by just letting you know that I would like to approach this chapter um, from a standpoint of personal application because I feel like with topics such as digital audio that can get complex and can get kind of confusing, especially if it's not your forte, your, um, your interest, especially really applying it to your own personal life is probably the best way to really understand it. So to begin, I'd like to ask everyone the question to be thinking about during the presentation is where do you get your music? Do you download it through iTunes? Do you purchase CDs? Do you rent your music? Do you stream your music online um, from a source such as Pandora, Spotify, other things like that? Or do you steal your music? So um, to continue moving on, you can proceed to the first uh, slide. Uh, what is digital audio? Um, I've come up with this definition on the slide uh, because it really simplified it to where I really understood it better. And I also wanted to leave it open um, kind of to interpretation and change for future, you know, advancements in digital technology as well. Um, so digital technology or digital audio is a technology that can be used to record, reproduce, copy, or manipulate sounds using encoding or decoding in a digital format. You can proceed to the next slide. So why should it be studied? Why should we study and understand digital audio? Well, first and foremost, and I didn't include this on the slide, uh, we use it in everyday life. You turn on your phone or your iPod and you're playing music while you're taking a shower or getting ready. Uh, you get in your car and turn on the radio. You're listening to songs that have been pre-recorded. You might even be listening to a newscast on the radio that's also been pre-recorded. So we utilize it so much in our daily lives. I think that it's important to understand those things that we have, you know, the ability and the privilege of using uh, really at our, at our fingertips whenever we want. Um, so also, it is quickly becoming the most prominent means of listening and sharing music, not just here in the United States, but internationally. Um, so that's, that's a pretty big deal that now, you know, you're talking almost the entire world has adapted to to this form of listening to audio recordings. Um, now more than 28 million people pay for subscriptions to online music sources such as Pandora, Google Play, Spotify, and that's just the United States. Um, so 28 million Americans are paying for those subscriptions. Also the influx of the digital audio in the last decade has really um, not just improved the industry overall, but it's generated so much revenue. And we'll talk about that kind of towards the end of the presentation. I'll give you a little bit more details on that uh, as we get further into the topic. Um, and now there are currently more than 500 licensed music service providers worldwide that provide downloads, streaming, and legal access to all varieties of music. Uh, so those so those uh, are there for you to use um, to get legal music. You can proceed to the next slide. So historically, um, there are really two types of digital audio. There's analog and there's digital. Um, so we'll start with analog. Analog literally means a similar or, co or a copy. Um, and it's any copy or change to a sound that is bound to have some sort of major change or imperfection or degradation. Um, and now a, a pro to the digital side of it is that digital technology can now completely eliminate those imperfections, like white noise or maybe a blip in the sound. Um, an audio codec um, is a computer or device that is capable of audio compression or decompression. And currently in the industry, there's really no one standard for, for an audio codec. So you can proceed to the next slide. Now, digital, um, there are four main types of digital audio. Uh, the first is CDs or compact discs that revolutionized the audio industry. Um, I can remember as a kid having a tape player in my mom's car. Um, and back then, most cars came standard with a tape player. Today, and for the last decade or so, 
most cars have come standard with a CD player. And now today we've started seeing cars that don't have either. They have an aux cable or an aux cord for you to um, plug in your phone, iPad, iPod, and other MP3 player, whatever you're using to play your music. Um, there's peer-to-peer -peer sharing or P2P sharing, which is where you can create a playlist and um, use it universally on your um, devices. So I can have a playlist on my iPad, and as long as it's connected to my iPhone, I can have, have it on my iPhone, my laptop, I can even pull it up on my Apple TV. And then there's also podcasting, which is done through RSS, which is really simple syndication. Um, podcasts are often recordings of people talking. Um, usually it's like it's somewhat similar to a talk show, but just the audio portion of it. Um, and you can download those from places like iTunes and, and have them on your devices ready to listen anytime you want. Next slide. So uh, over the last several decades, there have been a lot of uh, legislation and, and uh, preventative measures that the United States has had to go to um, to include not only the new you know, technologies, but also to accommodate the rise in theft um, and all of that that's going on in the music industry. So in 1992, the AHRA, the Audio Home Recording Act, amended the United States constitutional right uh, to copyright to the copyright law, um, and amended it to include digital format of uh, that copyright. Uh, in 1996, the Digital Performance Right and Sound Recording Act uh, now grants owners the copyright in a sound recording an exclusive right to perform copyrighted work publicly in its in digital transmission. Uh, the No Electronic Theft Law, or the NET Act of 1997, provides criminal prosecution for individuals who participate in copyright infringement um, under certain circumstances. So, in other words, not all circumstances um, would would require criminal prosecution, um, but there are certain standards to which they kind of measure the various situations by. Um, and so, lastly, we have the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, or the DMCA of 1998, and that actually criminalizes criminalizes the production and dissemination of technology, um, devices, or services that are intended to circumvent measures, meaning um, any production or redistribution or dissemination of a, uh, of a work, um, any redistribution of that is now a criminal act, and you can be punished very severely under the law um, for that. There's also something now called DRM-free music, which offers varying prices on music uh, based on the popularity and age of a song. So probably the best way to go about seeing this or understanding this um, is if you were to go on iTunes and look up a song and maybe an older recording of the song might only be 99 cents, but a newer, more updated, clearer version of the song might be at like $1.29. Um, I noticed this with a, with a Beatles song that I was downloading recently. Um, an older version was only 99 cents, but they had a new digital version that was $1.29 um, that was clearer and sounded like you were right there, right there with the Beatles. Um, so you can go to the next slide. So there are a lot of new developments uh, within the industry um, that we have to consider when we're you know, looking at all of the ways that it's improved and changed over the years. Um, now there's wireless digital media, which is basically through your phone. It's um, a payment that's added on to your bill each month. Um, we have Sprint Music Plans. That's one. And then also AT&T has one called the eMusic Upload. So those are two of, uh, examples of that service there. Um, there's subscription-based services, such as Spotify, Pandora, and Groovesharp. I believe Pandora is free. Um, up to a certain, you know, within a certain category, and then if you would like your music to be advertisement free, uh, you can pay per month. Um, and Spotify and GrooveShark are some other examples of that. Um, there's also free Playcast 
uh, playlist webcasters um, such as SoundCloud and 8-Track, where those are completely free. Um, disadvantages to that are you do every, you know, every couple songs or so you have to listen or see an advertisement. Um, and then finally, there are cloud music services where I mentioned this earlier. You have a universal device. Uh, you have universal devices that are kind of all connected together. So if you have Google Play or your iCloud, as long as you can log into that account, um, you can pull up those, that music and those playlists anywhere, anytime, and, and listen to them, sort of like the P2P peer to peer sharing. Next slide, please. Um, there are also some copyright legislations um, and, and certain preventative measures that have recently gone into play, um, such as the copyright alert system. It was first established in July of 2012, but not actually implemented until February of 2013. And what it does is partners with major internet service providers to track and minimize the exploitation of the recording industry by actually assessing theft uh, by organizations or individual users um, to, try to, to try to reduce and minimize the amount of music uh, that is taken uh, unlawfully. There are some cases, some examples of some cases, and you can read more, detail, uh, more detailed information about these in our textbook. Um, but some cases include Mega Upload, Groove Shark, and the Pirate Bay. These have been pretty big cases. Um, most of them have been settled out of court, um, but others um, have not. Others have included multiple companies coming together to sue these particular online entities. Um, and it really just depends on the situation. They're either settled out, out of court with a separate agreement or they're settled in court with serious, serious ramifications. Uh, so next slide. So what do we know about the current status of the digital audio industry? And uh, so it's come a long way, first of all. Um, as of 2013, nearly 45% of households owned an MP3 player or equivalent. Um, additionally, the Nielsen SoundScan data, which is similar to Nielsen ratings, which tracks television usage in certain households, um, it tracks musical data through online retailers, performance venues, as well as brick and mortar stores. Also, the International Federation of the Photographic Industry, or the IFPI, represents the industry worldwide and produces annual reports um, detailing the current status of the digital audio industry as well as the music industry. And uh, they publicize those and make those available to the public each year. Next slide. So, Additionally, in 2012, and this is something that's really kind of crazy to think, in 2012, digital downloads surpassed CD sales for the first time. And it's crazy to think that the first time that happened was just three years ago in 2012. Uh, but it's crazy the way that um, digital downloads have just blown CD sales and vinyl sales out of the water. Um, additionally, a 2013 report by Billboard.com found that iTunes now sells roughly 21 million songs per day. Now they have not updated those statistics since 2013, so I'd venture to guess that they're going to be doing that pretty soon. It's been three years. Um, and iTunes has become even more popular, if that's possible. Um, but 21 million songs per day, you're considering $21 million, $21 million at least that's, you know, if considering all the songs were just 99 cents, not the songs that are $1.29 as well. So um, that's pretty cool to think about and also um, just gives you a very small idea of um, how far this industry has come over the last couple of decades um, and also, you know, what these new technological improvements have done for the industry as a whole. Um, so, so last but not least, uh, these are the questions for you to consider and answer in the discussion board. Um, do you think that older, more outdated forms of digital content, such as compact discs, will ever completely fade away? So when you're um, discussing that, uh, you can consider the disillusionment of the VHS tape and also um, vinyls and that sort of thing. Also. Are entities such as the Copyright Alert System implemented in February 2013 
and other national legislations doing enough or being successful at their goal of diminishing the theft and pirating of digital audio? Um, so those are the questions for your discussion board, and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Thanks.